The Treasure of the Magi, A Study of Modern Zoroastrianism by James Hope Moulton. We start here, still in Book 1, with Chapter 3, After Zarathustra. Xanthus the Lydian says that 600 years after passed between Zoroaster and the invasion of Xerxes, and that after him there was a long succession of magi, with names like Ostens, Astram, Sycus, Gabrias, and Bazates, up to the conquest of the Persians by Alexander Diogenes. The Gathas, which have engaged our attentions exclusively so far, are a small part of the Avesta, the sacred book of the Parsis. How much of the remainder was worthy of being packed up in the treasures of the Magi will become clearer as we go on, since the whole of this book forms the canon of the Parsi faith. Throughout its last 16 centuries, we are necessarily bound to examine it very carefully. The Parsi canon ha has, a surf has a curious surface relation to the Jewish in that it includes everything that survives in an extinct sacred language. This, of course, only the objective fact and must not be taken as suggesting the reason. The Jews took no trouble to preserve the archaic Hebrew of books. Aramea is actually what the language calls itself, but which in Palestine they did not regard as representative of their religion. The Parsis were assisted in their selection by other forces. Alexander is said to have burnt in have burnt an Avesta have burnt an Avesta, which according to Hermippus of the 3rd century BCE, extended to two million lines. If Hermippus wrote of what he had seen, it is obvious that Alexander did not destroy the only copy, and indeed we may reasonably cherish some skepticism as to Alexander's alleged anticipation of German ways with a library. It was not at all like him, unless wine had used the wand a circa, his father. It may be admitted he was proverbially a different man, drunk and sober, leaving indeterminate the question whether the chivalrous and cultured genius lapsed for this occasion into an act of extraordinarily to an act extraordinarily unworthy of him. We may go on to note that the vicissitudes of the Arsacid era undeniably reduced the quantity of old material very seriously indeed, while the Muslim conquest of Persia ultimately came very near destroying it all. Well, that's an exaggeration, but there were violations of Islamic law as part of the conquest, particularly in five places. Um, but Alexander the Great, every but he wrote about him, wanted to re-put him back into his culture. So Alexander the Great may not have been, you know, he may not have been your typical Greek. And that's why he was able to do what he did. And he may not have, you know, what was there four supposedly historical accounts of him, but they were all slanted. Our extant catalogs of the contents of the Avesta and the Sassanian Age show that we have lost an Eminence, an immense mass of text. The description of this lost material accessible, especially in Dastur Darab's monumental edition of the Dinkard, does not enable us to decide whether we have to blame. Oh, the Dinkard, the Dinkard, does not enable us to decide whether we have to blame or bless the memory of the accursed Sikander, our anonymous successors who so largely reduced the bulk of what we are bound to read. With this summary, we may dismiss the question of the lost of Vesta, uh, may dis of the lost of Vesta, of the lost of Vestan texts, since in this book 
We are not concerned with mere archaeology. The extant Avesta will give us quite enough to study, and it is the extant Avesta to which the present-day Parsi must, perforce, make his appeal. The history of the term Avesta is much disputed, and may not be decisively cleared up. It probably denotes the original text of which the Zend was an interpretation. The term Zend was often used in the West as a name for the Avestan language, but has now been abandoned as incorrect, which is regrettable, for its convenience is obvious. The Zend Avesta is still the name for the book itself, even in the translation to which English students are restricted. That by Mills and Darmesteter in Sacred Books of the East. What is said here about the Avesta must be limited strictly to information needed by a student desirous of following up a purely religious following up purely religious questions. Matters of literary history and interpretation must be sought elsewhere. Now Let's not pretend. Religion is supposed to be a relationship with God and created. Well, how do you escape creation? Everything of life is supposed to be a religious question. The most practical question emerging is one which logically have taken its place at the beginning of the last chapter. The Avesta is, in a dead language, known only to a small community of Western Orientalists and to a strangely small number of the Parsis. Venerated as scripture, how can an investigator, interested in religious questions only, unable to spare time for the complex and difficult study of Avestan dialect, obtain reliable data for his purpose? The answer is not very satisfactory. For the latter Avesta, the translation of Mills and Darmester, 1887-1895, is generally trustworthy but it needs checking. Geldner's critical text of the original has appeared since the version was completed, and the lexical studies of the past 20 years have made very considerable differences in the rendering of numerous passages. In the Gathas, the matter is more serious. Professor Mills knows the native tradition better than anyone in East or West, and when we can understand his English, we get the best approximation to the meaning as it is accepted by the Parsis today. But whether it is Zarathustra's meaning is quite another matter. No one who has studied the Gathas critically can ignore the translation by Bartholoma, whose lexicon of the old Iranian languages is the indispensable tool of all scholars. The results of Bartholoma's labors have been made accessible for the latter Avesta and Wolf's translation of the whole text. It is not an independent work, but a rendering of the latter Avesta according to Bartholoma's views, as stated in his dictionary. The, the lexicographer takes full account of the Parsi tradition as well as of the philological researches of the past 40 years in which he has taken a large part. His results are startlingly different from those of his predecessors in a great many places, especially in the Gathas, but one who, like the present writer, has had occasion to compare them in detail with those of other scholars cannot resist the impression that he is far more often right than wrong. A rather serious example is, is when a pioneer scholar investigating points of contact between the ideas of Buddhism and Parsism sent me a very neat parallel for the Buddhist wheel of the law. It was there to be sure an SBE, but reference to the Geldner reference to Geldner's text showed that another reading was adopted on preponderant evidence, and the parallel vanished. A brief sketch of the contents of the extant Avesta should be supplied before we go on to look at the history, look at its history from another point of view. As the reader of the previous chapter has observed, the hymns of Zarathustra are embedded in the Yasna worship, a sort of prayer book in which the hymns are numbered as chapters, ha, the five gathas are has. 28 to 34, 43 to 46, 47 to 50, 51, and 53. Has 35 through 42 are the Gathas, uh, uh, are the Gatha of the seven Has, Gathna, Haptang Haiti. Now divide 
but now divided into eight sections. That's a strange burp. Actually, more or less a normal burp, but this is in prose, but in the Gothic dialect, and presumably much and presumably much older than the latter Avesta in general, the dialect of which is decidedly of less archaic character. The rest of the Yasna consists in miscellaneous prayers with Yasamedi, we worship, recurrent. There are also pieces that seem to belong rather to the Yasts. The next great division of the Vesta, these are 21 pieces, some of them very long, and praise of angels as regularized Parsi doctrine calls them. Yazata, worshipful. Remember the yes name for the yes, the Yazata. Angel, Yazdan, worship. So they worship. But there's reason to think that these are the you know, the jinn, even in this usage, but Yashti, Yasht, songs of worship, and Yasna are all from the same root, Yaz, Sanskrit, Yaj, Greek, Azomei, Agyas. The rest of the Korda Avesta, Little Avesta, includes the Afragon ritual, pieces of rather, of a rather miscellaneous kind. See Raza invocations to the, to the Yazata who provides over the 30 days of the month. Nyayish petitions to powers of nature and gods. Prayers for the five divisions of the day. A small section stands by itself. The Visparad. 24 pieces in honor of heavenly authorities. Ratu. The great section is Dvidevdat. Vendadad, the Leviticus of the Parsi Canon, with minor alluded text, mostly fragmentary. The relative bulk of these sections may be expressed by pages of Wolf's translation, in which pages are seven and a half by five inches, with only a line or two of references at the foot. The Yasna, without the five Gathas, occupies 102 pages. The Yasts, 146. The Vidim Dot, 123, and the rest only 57 in all. Wolf, unfortunately, does not include the fragments, which Gildner did not print in the great critical edition. Dermestester, accordingly, has in the English version a considerable amount of matter which cannot be found in the latter translation. Okay, so I'll go close there, but um, certainly people tried to compile the Bibles of what was said in religious history in various cultures. And while there may be flaws with some of that, it's, it was a good thing they tried to preserve what existed.